Some members of Congress have decided we need to start funding Alzheimer's research like we have funded cancer research. Because if we don't start treating Alzheimer's more aggressively, we could swamp our medical system with millions of patients. They're proposing raising Alzheimer's funding to a total of $2.8 billion. Our senior source reporter Mark Koberg joins us now because DU also has some big news on early detection, Mark, and that will become critical for Alzheimer's patients as well. You're absolutely right, Kim. So what we know now is that an Alzheimer's diagnosis is essentially a death sentence for a patient because the sixth leading cause of death has no treatment, no prevention, no cure. And in fact, 45% of doctors, even if they know you have Alzheimer's, they won't give you a diagnosis because there is simply nothing they can do for you. So we need a cure very badly and we need it soon. So a very piece of, a good piece of news from DU is that once the cure arrives, the researchers at DU may have discovered a way to deliver an early diagnosis. Dr. Lada Granholm Bentley at the Nobel Institute at DU says a collaboration with the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm, the people who award the medical Nobel, has resulted in a blood test for early diagnosis. They believe they can now see early on if you are a candidate for the disease by analyzing tiny little bubbles of blood in your brain. Here's how the method works. And what it is doing is that it's taking small bubbles in blood samples and the bubbles we can identify the little bubbles that came from the brain it's kind of like the the murder investigations where you look in someone's trash because we can actually identify the bubbles that came from the brain from a simple blood sample and then we subtract all of the bubbles we look what's inside of them and that's when we discover that 10 years or more before someone has alzheimer symptoms there are actually already amyloid and tau and inflammation in these little bubbles. And amyloid and tau are the proteins in the brain that ca cause the plaques and the... So if we can detect those early on, once we have a cure, we can hopefully start treatment very early on and ultimately eliminate the disease. So it's very exciting. And by the way, Dr. Uh, Granholm Bentley points out that all this research was done with the Down syndrome population 90% of whom end up with Alzheimer's. So they believe that those folks may hold the key for all the rest of us, let's, so, let's hope so. So while we wait for a cure, uh, there are four things you can do, the doctor says, to build defenses against the disease. First of all, exercise for 30 minutes, at least three times a week. Just uh, three 30 minute walks is a good start. Heavier exercise is better, but you reduce your stress and cut your risk for Alzheimer's by 40%. Eat more fish. She likes a diet with a lot of salmon, but fish and blueberries and leafy vegetables fewer of the trans fats found in fried foods. Limit yourself to no more than 1,800 calories a day. Believe it or not, in the United States, we consume about 3,500 calories a day. So way too many and be as social as possible. The death rate for Alzheimer's patients in isolation during the pandemic these past few months is up 26%. A lack of socialization will just, frankly, will just kill you, which is why, Kim, I know that you will live forever because you're the most social person on the planet. So you have that one. Oh, no, I pale in comparison to you, Mark. <laughs> Back in the day, it was like, you know, you would walk in and it was just a flurry of conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I love to visit. It's true. I know. But it's that's so interesting because we have heard so much about the impact of the pandemic as well. And then global down syndrome, we know, has been deeply involved in this research. So it's pretty cool what what's going on. Um, one drug, though, that's being scrutinized as a possible cure got some attention last week. And that news was not necessarily good. No, and that's the news about aducanumab, and that was a drug that was being touted as a potential cure. The maker is Biogen, but an independent panel of medical experts concluded it's not the drug of choice, but what, they, what we think is, the FDA is still looking at it, it might become a drug in a toolbox of drugs that we can use in treatment for Alzheimer's. Uh, meanwhile, we continue to watch Lupine at CU, Dr. Uh, uh, Huntington Potter over there, who I know you've done stories with and who you know, he, he is still in the middle of research a lot of which has been suspended because of the pandemic, but Lucine is still very promising. And all the doctors I talked to talk about the desperate need for a drug. Jim Hurley, he over at the Colorado chapter of the Alzheimer's Association has the number. He says there are 5.5 million people in the U.S. with Alzheimer's at a cost to our economy of $300 billion a year. So $3 billion for research against $300 billion in outlay for, for a treatment and care. You know, small price to pay to get rid of this disease. We've got to do something. Got to do it. All right. Well, Mark, it's always good to see you and to visit. <laughs> Love to visit.
visit with you. All right. Keeping me Early alive. happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> okay. You too, Kim.